Deuce Time says, I'm late here. I don't know if y'all discussed this, but MC8 said you robbed him of his publishing. It wasn't me. That's okay, and, and trip out. This is what I've learned about people who post comments. Don't take that comment for, like, a lot of people like to start no. stuff or they heard something different, but explain it. He he um he he was he was on he was on the feed last week and we he came in late last week. Uh, it wasn't Lonzo, okay. Uh, I I was on eight only had one song with me and that was on the Compton compilation. I didn't do a deal with eight. Eight was not signed to me for that Compton compilation. They had that they had that one song on there. Eight was signed to Unknown DJ. What me, okay? Compton Most Wanted was signed to Techno Hop, not Crew Cut, okay. Now eight. If you maybe you heard that wrong, but maybe you assumed uh, uh, he said it was on the Gangster Chronicles. Now he may have said it. I know he's he's he is a contributor to the Gangster Chronicles, but he eight was never signed to me. Okay, that uh, how he got how he got us confused ain't ain't possible. Okay, um, eight was signed to um, Techno Hop Records, which is unknown DJ. He, I, got, I gave eight his start in the beginning with one song on the Compton compilation. That was it, along with everybody else uh, from from Sound Control Mob. Eight never signed it. He never. When eight came to me, they had one song. We did uh, "This Is Compton," and they uh, they got a deal with Orpheus, uh, which was distributed by MCA, I believe. I'm not sure, but he was never signed to me as an artist. I never signed. I, I discovered. Uh, CMW, I never signed CMW. They were signed to somebody else. Okay, so uh, we can get that straight. Any, any. T- um... And I remember watching that specific interview. Actually, now that now that you talk about it, he did say unknown DJ. I didn't. I didn't piece it all together. He said yeah. unknown DJ for robbing, for robbing him and called out, called him out on that. I called him out on that. Okay, yeah. Um, he, he okay. He was blaming you and unknown. Was Robin in call? I called him out on that. Okay, yeah, I never. Um, yeah, okay, it was shipping to EMI, much love and capital. Yeah, I didn't. You know, I. Uh, um, no, dude, I I didn't work with eight like that. I didn't produce on his records. I didn't put, slip produce the stuff. I signed him to. I did one deal. One. I did a compilation album, Compton compilation. He was signed to Techno Hop. And uh, he had a deal with Orpheus. Orpheus. Now here's here, now here's the part. Here's the part. Here's the part. Here's the part where the shit starts in the record business. Okay. Now, no matter what happens, Orpheus ripped everybody off. Charles Huggins, the guy that ran Orpheus, went to the penitentiary. Okay, for ripping off his his wife was Melba Moore. The singer, Melba Moore, he ripped her off, okay? He ripped off um, Techno Hop, but Unknown gets blamed for it, okay? That's how it go, Doc. Okay? Real talk. That's real talk. When, when he, and Here's the part that... Uh, <laughs> um, when in the, in, the, in, the, in the record game, the brother usually get the blame for what the white people do. Okay. Oh. Oh. The brother get the blame for what the white people do. Oh. Okay. Everybody was mad at easy. Okay. NWA was mad at easy for a while. Mm. But easy didn't make the contract. Because see, here's some shit that I know that nobody don't know but Lonzo, because Lonzo was there. When Lonzo, when Easy came to me. When Easy came to me, before Easy went to Jerry Heller, I was Easy's consultant for Ruthless Records. Look at look at the Ruthless logo. It's made by the same guy that made the Crew Cut logo, the, te- the Techno Hot logo, everybody's logo. We had one graphic designer out of Compton named Lirab. They did everybody's logo. He Talk made, that shit, Lonzo. He made the Ruthless logo. When Easy needed a lawyer, because I'm the only one that was doing anything, I took him to my lawyer, Kent Clavins in Beverly Hills. I was sitting right there when Easy E gave him six hundred dollars for the Rufus contracts. Easy was shocked because he's like, "Oh my God, six hundred dollars!" Well, see, what you understand is, I this, you can get various kind of contracts from your lawyer. I said, I, "I want a contract. I want to own everything. 
I want a fair contract. Okay. I want um, a lot of it, or whatever the case may be. I always mm -hmm. ask for the fair contracts. Okay. I know. See, understand me. You got to understand Lonzo. Okay. I can't speak for nobody else in the game but Lonzo. Okay. Lonzo studio is in his house. I've been living here for 36 years. I've dealt with Crips, Bloods, everybody. I can't afford to rip nobody off. You know where I live at. I can't afford to rip nobody off because you know where I live at. I ain't never, I ain't moved in since, since 1985. I've been here since 1985, okay, in April. Oh, and actually, 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 wait a minute. I moved here March 21st, 1985. In a few days, it'll be 36 years, okay? So my philosophy was I'll pass on some cats before I get caught up with them because everybody don't understand the record game. I'll pass on a lot of people because I don't need to, I don't need to hassle at my house. I do your demos at my house. I have the meetings at my house. Okay. If I'm dealing with you on anything, everything was done in my house. All these, everything you saw is straight out of Compton up until the time I walked out the studio and said, no, you got it. Dre was, that was particular. I was, that was uh, depicting my house where I live in today, where this duty, where, where we are, where I am right now doing this podcast. So I've always had a thing that if I'm going to work with you, I'm going to treat you as fair as possible. And I don't need anybody creeping around my house with no guns and can. I don't need all that. Okay. I got guns. I got shotguns. I don't want to shoot nobody. And I don't want to get shot. Okay. So when things got gangsterish, I decided to leave the music business alone. Simple as that. I did one gangster album, one gangster type album, which was flaming. And I learned a lesson from that. Okay. I learned a lesson. I decided I'm going to leave this gangster shit alone because I don't want to hurt nobody. And I ain't trying to get hurt. Not that I'm a punk. I just got other shit, to, uh, other shit. I got bigger fish to fry. Okay. And that's always been my philosophy. Okay. That's always been my philosophy. Okay. So when I do business with somebody, I'm going to do as straight up as possible. And if you don't understand that, I'm going to try and explain it to you. I've been explaining the record business to niggas for, 90, for, for 20, for 35 fucking years, okay? Now, if you don't listen, that ain't me, okay? If you don't listen, that ain't on me. And Cass that asked me, I will tell you because somebody told me. But people always, me and Unknown are still tight to this day. We tight right to this day, okay? Yeah, that's, um, that's not, not too long ago over there. Um, what happened with eight them, I don't even know because I kind of left that alone. They gave me a little finder's fee and I wished them luck. I went to their video, I went to their video shoots. I mean they uh photo shoots. We shot most of the stuff you saw at, at um the first straight up this first um MC8, uh first uh um uh Compton's most wanted uh photo shoot was done at the at the Hawthorne Mall right before it closed. Well, it was closed already. We we snuck up in there and took pictures and stuff. But Mike T ain't mad at me. Chill ain't mad at me. Okay. They was all in the group. They all they all had issues with eight at one time. They ain't mad at Lonzo. Chill been on my show. Mike T usually ch chime in from time to time. So, you know, but people always get me an unknown kind of confused. We've been tight for shit since Eve at the dark. In fact, let's get this straight out right now. On one of the documentaries, um, what's the guy's name? He's a lawyer who's a lawyer for Dick Griffey, says that Suge beat up a member of the wrecking crew. Suge ain't beat up no member for the wrecking crew. Okay. It was unknown he had a problem. They always got us confused. They always got us twisted up. Okay. Him and unknown had a problem. But Lonzo, I didn't go around death row like that. I didn't, I didn't. <laughs> All money ain't good money for me. I'm sorry, folks. That's been my philosophy all my life. I saw that on handwriting on the wall. Yeah, it was a lot of money, but I don't need the headache. I like sleeping at night. I don't like living with living with looking over my shoulder. I go wherever I want. The other day, I'll tell you a true story. It happened the other day. Uh, um, I, I, I'm gonna tell you this happened the other day. I'm I'm at Denny's. 
over in our over on our Imperial and Crenshaw, me and one of my folks having breakfast. Oof. And um this dude walked up to this dude stepped, hey, 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 excuse me, sir. And I could tell this cat he was he was in the life, okay? Blue tattoos all over his face, blue sweatsuit, you know, and he was one of them dudes, okay? He said, Man, I know you, man. You look familiar. You look familiar, dude. I, I, did you want, won't you be on Vlad or something? I said, yeah, man, that's me. Uh, wrecking crew, right? Yeah, yeah. And I could tell that he was from the other side or he was, he was, you know, from the blue team, okay? Yeah, man, yeah, but I'll tell him, I knew I recognize you. That right there, for me, lets me know, I don't, ain't, no, ain't nobody checking for me like that. I've been, I've been the same way all my life. I'm, I'm, I've, been a, I've been a grown man since the, since the 80s, okay? If I was like that, Niggas would have been got with me. I ain't, I, I ain't hard to find. I run nightclubs. I'm, I'm out at two or three o'clock in the morning. I was. So when I made a, I made a conscious decision not to do certain things. Okay. I don't like nothing on my shoulder. That man walked up to me. He, he, he was, he was very humble. He was very polite. Now, according to his face, where he come from, if I saw him someplace else, I might not have felt that comfortable talking to him. Cause you could tell, you know, he he you know he been to jail or something. I've been to a hell of a tattoo artist, okay. But on the same token, I'm in San Diego. Uh, Sunday, I took the train to San Diego. Took had to do a show out there, just hanging out with a buddy of mine doing a DJ show, and Amtrak was shut down from San Diego to Irvine, so we had to catch a bus. It was one of the luxury buses from Irvine, San Diego, to Irvine. And I'm standing in line. I got my mask pulled down because my beard was itching. And home, this white big white dude, big white boy. Look, Lazo, is that Lazo? Lazo Williams? I said, yeah, what's up, man? Oh, man, oh, man, oh, man. God damn, Mr. Godfather, West Coast hip. Oh, man. Hey, I- I'm embarrassed as shit. <laughs> I'm embarrassed. I'm the only black person on the damn bus. Big white boy is giving me all this praise. I'm, I'm walking here. Thank you, man. Much love. He gave me dab. I gave him dab. Whatever the case may be. He wanted the picture, but he it, he had to load the bus up. But he was like, oh, man, it's hip hop royalty, blah, blah, blah. So and I, I said, I'll just say this. I missed a lot of money. I missed, I may have missed a lot of money in my life so I can sleep at night. Okay. I may have missed a lot of money so I can sleep and go where the fuck I want to go when I want to go. Okay. That's so important, dog. Okay. Well, I could get Mike T in the house. What's up, Mike T? Now, Mike T, <laughs> Mike T, in, in, uh, Mike T will tell you, um, oh, oh, Mike T, your birthday, Mike T. Happy birthday, man. Happy birthday, Mike T. If that, uh, yeah, happy old, happy old day to me, Mike T. What's up, Mike? Hey, man, look here, Mike. Uh, Mike T was a member of um, CMW, a major, a major player, DJ for for CM Compton's Most Wanted. Now, Mike, uh, one of the guys in the chat room was saying that I took Ace Publishing. Now, as you very well know, I was never y'all was never signed to me, okay? And I'm just trying to explain how I how I get out. I, I, how I get out and how I've been getting out. And this is why everybody that ever worked with me will still deal with me uh, for the most part. Okay. All the guys that ever came through here, whether it was Crips, Bloods, whatever the case may be, they all got love for me. Because I want, you know, because at that time, they may not, may not have understood what I was trying to do. But as they matured, oh, they, oh shit, I see what you were talking about, Lonzo. Now that shit makes sense. Okay. Yep. Uh, I was at Norm's on Imperial and Crenshaw. Yep, your third D blue, um, and I ain't never, I, I never discriminated. If you can't, if you had talent, okay. Oh, oh I didn't say it. Oh, A said no, 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 no. I understand, bro. I understand. I understand what you said. I'm not accusing you of saying. I'm just saying you. I, I remember you. You was you was talking about it last week, and I, uh, I don't know how I got into that situation right there because I didn't do that. I didn't take no publishing from eight. I've had people, I've had art come to me on multiple occasions and tell me, Lonzo, man, put me on, dude. I give you all my publishing right now, man. I got a hundred songs. I'll give you all my publishing. Just put me on. Just put me on. And beg me, beg me. First of all, if you're going to give me a hundred, uh, 
here was, here was my tea right here. No Lonzo never gave a contract to in, no one. Uh, unknown had the control of Ace Publishing because he signed the eight when eight was under age at the time. Bam. Mike T, much love. Thank you very much, sir. Um, but I've had artists offer me their publishing um, to put them on. Hundred songs, man. I got a hundred songs right now. First of all, if you got a hundred songs, you're going to give me the publishing. You probably got a hundred tracks of bullshit, first of all. Okay. <laughs> you got a hundred tracks of bullshit. Right? Um, second, second, um, um, second of all, if I take your publishing today, and one of your songs happened to blow up and you don't get no money, you're going to be on my head. You'll be looking for me. Okay. Now they, it happens all the time. I know guys that are the gangsters that have been ripped off for hundreds of thousands in publishing money and didn't do a damn thing about it. Okay. Hmm. I've, I've had people, guys change the writers on the song so that the manager or somebody the so-called manager the writers credits and the publishing i probably would catch a case for that one right there okay but i would i didn't i won't do it to nobody because i understand you stupid right now okay and once you learn the game you're going to tell people how i took advantage of you i don't want to do that i don't want to be in that position okay like i said before i, I do what i do because i can do it and not look over my shoulder. I don't. My reputation means a lot to me, man. Mike T, one of my boys. My, you know, Mike T come by the house. We gonna go fishing one of these goddamn days. Mike T got a big old boat, and you know, and it was slipped in when I did the reunion. Everybody glad to hang out, man. You know, that means more to me than uh uh than, than stealing these cats publishing. You know, that come on, man, because it happened to me, and I, I wouldn't do that to nobody else. And you know. That's just how I, I know some, oh man, Lonzo, no, nah, dude, that's just how, that's how I am, man. That I, I could have ripped off a whole lot of people and been going out my house by now, okay? But man, I don't need, I don't need the headache. I don't need the headache. Mm. I don't need the headache. Damn. That's just me. This has been my favorite show in a long time, Lonzo. I'm keeping it real. I'm glad you cleared that up. And shout out to Mike T for coming on and happy birthday to you. Man. Yeah, happy birthday, Playboy. Happy birthday. See all oh, yeah, man. See, when when you got Crips and Bloods at your house, at your house, and, and this these, these these cats was active back then. They these niggas are retired now. <laughs> they got old. <laughs> these niggas was reti they retired. Um they, they they retired now. Back then they was full of eight ball. And in uh, Hennessy, and it could go down to any given moment. I had to be a so I had to be the sober one in the room to make sure everybody was straight. And mm -hmm. we never had we. I've been here. I, I, I had all these cats in the house, man. We never had an incident, dude. Never, never had a fight. Had a couple of disagreements, but we never. Have, I, they know I wouldn't tolerate that. And it, it, when you came over here, it was about getting your money. It was about trying to learn the game. Now, if you didn't learn the game uh, fast enough to get get yourself together, I can't help you with that one. Mike T says, Lonzo gave me the biggest, biggest chance to learn engineering in the studio when it was all, when I was, all I had was a two SB 12 drum machine and, uh, no, no knowledge. knowledge of how to run a studio. That's why I always find things, uh, to give back to him. And that's true. That's true. That's dope, man. If, if Mike was a part of that, Mike was a part, it's still a, he's a part of CMW. If he felt that I ripped off eight or anybody else. He would probably be salty toward me too. Chill was a part. Chill, he was other half. Chill, ain't, ain't no salt in that game. Ain't no salt. You know, most of the cast didn't understand what I was doing at the time because the game was new to me. The game was new to me. Somebody told me, man, you can do this if you want to, but long term it ain't worth the hassle. Okay, they told me, oh, oh, the old players, yeah, man, you can keep this, you can take this, you can take this, but one day it's gonna catch up with you, and you don't want you don't want that to you know somebody to walk up to your ass and shoot you upside hit you upside the head or shoot you. Cause you took took they they kids fortune from them mm -hmm. okay. 20 years ago 20 years at that ago. you know what i mean okay because 20 years ago this stuff wasn't worth no money mm -hmm. but now in the 80s and in, in 2021 this shit's worth money now okay mm -hmm. and that's what that's what the folks know when they take it from me in the first place they know if the value goes up over time okay 
So what you would do in the 80s and 90s, you'll fail, you'll fail your future for a few dollars, and then all of a sudden you get mad because somebody, you know, they ripped me off. No, they paid you. They didn't just supposed to do it. You just didn't, you didn't, you didn't, know, you didn't respect your value. Mm-hmm. You didn't respect the money. 